Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Dresden, Ontario, catching up with Omafra Soil Fertility Specialist Colin Elgy. Colin, how's it going? Great, Bern. Thanks for uh, coming out to beautiful Kent County. You know, we've got some some fabulous sunshine today, which is uh, which is helping the crops grow. But uh, gosh, sure could use a drink. Yeah, we're going to get it hopefully pretty soon. But hey, today you and your father are out here applying some side dress nitrogen. Tell us about the season here, how dry it is, and you know how that factors into what you guys have been up to today. Yeah, no. So uh, yeah, first off, with how dry it's been, it's been at least the driest in 20 years. Um, you look at the weather uh, from Ridgetown, and yeah, as far back as the records go, she's uh, she's very dry. Um, it's it's actually been a little cool too. Um, you know, we've had some real hot days, but overall the weather trends they've been cool, and we've had some cool nights. So we're actually behind a bit in the. Uh, in the uh, crop heat units. So what are you guys doing today? Uh, what's your end rate application? You know, what's your strategy here today? So we've got our own side dress unit. Um, and so we, we use it extensively. Uh, we've got a little bit of a different situation what we do on our farms than what some others do. Uh, we use a mix of, uh, of clover and the wheat the previous year. Uh, we put uh, mushroom compost on, mm -hmm. and then we, we top up in season with 28% uh, UAN. And so what we're doing here today is we're putting on, uh, you know, a relatively low rate, uh, about 23 gallons, and, uh, and knifing it into the soil, trying to get it in as deep as possible. Uh, we're also using a nitrogen stabilizer because we know that our application equipment, it may not get it closed in, in every part of this field because we've got some varying soils uh, going from, a, you know, a heavier clay loam to some light blow sand. Mm. And so we want to keep that nitrogen protected. Awesome. So, hey, let's talk overall um, nitrogen strategy here for side dress, you know, from a soil fertility management specialist perspective. You know, when you, uh, when you tackle this topic this time of year, it really starts with source, right? Four R's, right source. Exactly. Yep. That's that's usually where I start because it all depends on uh, on the four R's with how you set up your entire operation. Mm -hmm. So if we start with the source, uh, generally we're if we're side dressing, we're using a UAN, um, either 28 or 32 percent. Uh, but there's also a lot that are top dressing with urea, and so. It, when you're choosing your source, it really it's really a matter of, uh, of identifying what works best with your operation. Uh, the key with the source is urea especially is very prone to losses from volatilization. And so if you've got a urea uh, sitting on the surface, you can lose a lot of that off to the atmosphere pretty quick. Uh, UAN is a little less than half urea. And so right off the bat, you know, if it's sitting on or near the surface, you've got a lot less chance for volatilization. So Colin, let's talk about time of application. Number two on your list of considerations. Yeah, so timing is incredibly important for uh, your nitrogen application because it really tries to match up with how much nitrogen is in the soil at any given time with that corn crop's uptake curve. Mm -hmm. So we know that later on in the season, that crop can pull a lot more nitrogen out of the soil than it can earlier on. So if you're going in at, uh, at two leaf corn, you know, there's some growers that do, you get less damage on the headlands from turning around, uh, but you're really putting a big supply of nitrogen on uh, before that crop can use it. Versus coming in closer to say eight leaf corn, uh, you might do a little bit more damage turning around on the headlands, mm -hmm. but you're generally applying more nitrogen when that crop can take it up faster. Yeah. Let's talk about placement. Uh, obviously, uh, soil type is you know a, a big consideration here. You know, you've got some really nice soil hair. How does it how does it factor in? Yeah, so soil type is a, a huge factor. So um, a real sandy soil, uh, you've got a lot higher chances of losses from uh, from volatilization um, as well as leaching. Um, you know, if you get a lot of rain in the soil, uh, you can get that washed out. Versus a, a heavy clay, um, you're a lot more prone to denitrification. You've got saturated soils that, that will sit there longer without draining. Um, and pH is such a big, uh, important factor in, uh, in nitrogen applications as well. Uh, high pH soil, so, you know, high sevens, eights, uh, you can really run into some rapid losses just from the, from the conversion mm -hmm. and, uh, and availability of that, that nitrogen to turn to ammonia. Yeah. Um, and so another factor, we, we look at soil types, we look at, you know, the, the pH factor, uh, but it's also placement within that soil that's important. 
And so uh, there's a lot of different ways to apply nitrogen. Um, if you're using UAN, you can knife it in like we've done here today. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also go with a wide drop style application where you're dribbling it on in the rows next to the plant. Um, the important factors are A, whether you've got it in the soil or on top of the soil. And by in the soil, you want it down at least two inches uh, to good depth to prevent losses. And if you've got it placed in the middle of the row or along the sides of the rows. Mm. And uh, I know Craig Drury, he's done some work uh, down in Harrow looking at, uh, at placement within the row. So looking at uh, placement in the middle and placement in the sides. Uh, his best, uh, best application as far as in terms of losses and yield was actually with a uh, twin row coulter. Uh, so injecting it closer to the sides of the rows. Um, by doing that, you know, you're having the rate uh, in any one point, so you've got less available for, for loss right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, but really important that wherever you're placing it, uh, you're trying to get it into that soil as quickly as possible so it's, it's not sitting on top of the right. soil for the air. So Colin, where did nitrogen stabilizers fit in a year like this? It's dry, are they better in these conditions? So I think they're a, a huge benefit in conditions like these. So we know we've got dry soils, we know we, we don't have a whole lot of moisture to pull that nitrogen into the soil quickly. We don't even have heavy dews this year. Um, so the ideal situation is we've got a good rain, so an inch or more of rain that can wash that nitrogen into the soil right away. If we don't have that, we've got a lot of nitrogen sitting right on the surface or right near the surface, and really that's where it can be, can be lost very easily. Um, the worst case possible scenario is if we get nitrogen sitting on the surface from our application and we get a tenth of an inch of rain, enough to get some moisture in there to activate all the bugs that are in the soil, mm -hmm. they can rapidly convert it to losable, losable forms of nitrogen and we could be in big trouble there. Right. So nitrogen stabilizers absolutely need to be in the, in the picture this year. Let's talk the big question, that is rates. Um, obviously a lot of different approaches here if you're splitting, if you're putting it down in the planter, how do you tackle that? And so all those four R sources that we've talked about today, so the source, uh, time and placement, they all play a factor into what rate you're choosing. Mm -hmm. Uh, so really the rate that you're trying to choose is the most profitable one. And so another important factor that I think that uh, we often overlook is how much that rate can change from year to year mm -hmm. just based on the economics. So, uh, uh, you know, if we've got high priced nitrogen fertilizer, uh, you know, corn price has been dropping lately. Uh, so really you've got to take a look at what that economic factor yeah. is. And what your yield potential is, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yield is such an important factor and, and really you're trying to to put as much on as you can to get the most profitable yield by limiting the losses that you can. So well, let's wrap this up with a couple of tips for growers. Obviously, um, we want to get some nitrogen on here. Do our PSNT test, go from there? Exactly, yep, the PSNT uh, is a perfect tool um, to give you an idea of what the soil mineralization has been like this year. Yep. Uh, uh, the uh, few examples we've seen so far uh, with, the, with the soils being dry and you know, relatively cool weather, we've seen less mineralization than we normally would. Um, and so in that case, it, you, know, you may adjust your nitrogen rate uh, based on your individual situation uh, to increase a little bit to uh, take that into account. Great stuff, Colin. Hey, lots of nitrogen going down in the next little while. It's at that stage, the crop is looking great. Um, appreciate your insight, sir. We'll catch up with you a little later in the summer on Corn Stool. How about that? I like it. Thanks for coming down, Bern. Good.